Welcome once again to Holy Spirit Parish North Ride in the Archdiocese of Sydney. A special welcome to our parishioners who are still in lockdown and are viewing online, and to all viewing here in Australia and other parts of the world. In our Mass today, we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Sunday is designated as Safeguarding Sunday in our Archdiocese. God's word in the first and second readings will be proclaimed by Guy and Franca Bonserio, who are celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. And it's very appropriate today because we also commence marriage week. Guy and Franca will renew their marriage vows during our mass. Our presiding priest is the provincial of the congregation of St. Michael the Archangel and our parish priest, Father Stan Klook. Conceptrating is the regional superior of the congregation, Father Anthony Casamento. We now begin Holy Mass with our opening hymn. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear friends, the Gospel emphasizes that the Son of Man came to serve rather than to be served. Today, we explore this inspired by Jesus' example of service. Let us now reflect on our faults and ask God's forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you place in us a desire to know you more deeply. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the perfect example of faith and good works. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you challenge us to follow you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are 
seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. In our first reading, God's servant suffers every indignity, but continues to trust in God. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance. Neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. My vindicator is here at hand. Does anyone start proceedings against me? Then let us go to court together. Who thinks he has a case against me? Let him approach me. The Lord is coming to my help. Who dare condemn me? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In our second reading, we are reminded that our faith is revealed in our good works. A reading from the letter of St. James. Take the case, my brothers, of someone who has never done a single good act but claims they have faith. Will that faith save him? If one of the brothers or one of the sisters is in need of clothes and has not enough food to live on, and one of you says to them, I wish you well, keep yourself warm and eat plenty, without giving them these bare necessities of life, then what good is that? Faith is like that. If good works do not go with it, it is quite dead. This is the way to talk to people like that. You say you have faith and I have good deeds. I will prove to you that I have faith by showing you my good deeds. Now you prove to me that you have faith without any good deeds to show. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you o lord jesus and his disciples left for the village for the villages around caesarea philippi on the way he put this question to his disciples who do people say i am and they told him john the baptist they said Others, Elijah. Others again, one of the prophets. But you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter spoke up and said to him, you are the Christ. And he gave them strict orders not to tell anyone about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man was destined to suffer grievously to be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and to be put to death and after three days to rise again. And he said all this quite openly. Then, taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. He called the people and his disciples to him and said, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it. But anyone who loses his life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Dear friends, we can say that we live in a celebrity-obsessed society, one that places great emphasis on beauty, wealth, 
fame, and popularity. In sports, business, politics, and even religion, we measure success or failure according to these standards. For example, a business is successful if it generates big profits. A church is successful if it attracts a lot of people. A government is successful if it performs well in the polls. However, the Word of God this Sunday challenges these basic assumptions. It defines the meaning of life not in terms of personal gain, self-interest, and shallow success, but rather in terms of one's sense of duty, commitment, and fidelity. In our first reading, Isaiah prophesies about the future Messiah who would vindicate the faithful exiles of Israel and bring them back to their homeland. Isaiah, however, describes this hero figure not in imperial language of power and dominance. He speaks of a humble, suffering servant instead. The Messiah is the one who would make no resistance, who would not cover his face against insult and spittle, like Zechariah, who foretells the king riding on a donkey, Isaiah goes against the grain of popular hopes and expectations. The Messiah would not follow the script of the empire. He would come as a poor and humble servant. And for the Jewish exiles hoping for liberation, this prophecy was a shocking revelation, shocking discovery. And there is a similar sense of this belief in our gospel story today. After surveying the opinion polls about him, Jesus asks the same question of his disciples. Who do you say I am? It is to this question, that Peter gives the answer, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And what follows is an unexpected lesson for Peter and the other disciples. Peter is praised for recognizing the Messiah. He is called Rock in St. Matthew's Gospel. However, the Rock can be either the cornerstone or the stumbling block. So long as Peter leaves out the call to emulate the suffering servant, yes, he is the rock of strength. But if he refuses to be part of Christ's suffering, he becomes the rock of offense. Indeed, Peter is soon rebuked and called a stumbling block precisely. Get behind me, Satan, because he wants to remove the cross from the mission of Jesus and Christian discipleship. Peter has a steep learning curve on his way to be the foundation stone for the Christian community. Like Paul, falling from his high horse Peter also has his pride and ambition checked. He learns to carry the cross as a discipleship of trust, powerlessness, and self-sacrifice. He learns to be led to places he would rather not go. And this is not simply geography, but above all a metaphor of genuine trust which is an essential quality for Christian living and witness. Dear friends, 
we can honestly say that in many ways the church today is being led to places that we would rather not go. You may ask, Father, what places? I think you know the answer. Or soon you'll find the answer. And I am not only referring to the crisis of diminishment in terms of vocations to the priesthood, religious life, or people in the pews. There is also a sense of diminishment in terms of the church's moral stature in society. There is little trust left in the church leaders after all the sexual scandals cover up and the Royal Commission. Yet, it is not time for defensiveness or despair. Rather, it is precisely in this time of humility that we must seek to rebuild, renew, and reimagine. And we do so by reclaiming not the former prestige and affluence, but the essential quality for Christian living and witness. We simply must make the cross of Jesus and the discipleship of powerlessness and genuine trust the cornerstone of the church again. And only by standing on the side of the powerless and the vulnerable, only by living authentically the call to poverty, simplicity and humility, can our voice be credible and our trust regained. Dear friends, it seems to me that the invitation to go to places that we'd rather not go is none other than the call to emulate the humble, powerless, and gentle Christ. It is the call to live more fully, more boldly, and more humbly in the world. And this has been Pope Francis's constant challenge to our church. The Pope wants us to go to the margins, to stay close to those on the edges of life, and to be that church which is bruised, hurting and soiled, because it has been out to the streets and immersed in the cold faced realities. It is the church that dare to do what Jesus did, to leave the security of its status, to accompany those most in need, to minister at the liminal and risky places of extreme human conditions, and to empower all people to live life more fully, to live life totally in Jesus Christ. So, dear friends, Let's pray today that we will respond to the person and message of Jesus not by words, as James says in our second reading, but by attitudes and actions that reflect the radical vision of Christian life. Let us also pray that we may be able to live fully that power of love especially during this time of great challenge, cleansing and renewal in our church. And now trusting our lives in Jesus Christ, let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth of, of all things, things visible, visible and invisible. I believe in one, one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, in our gospel today, Jesus encourages us to carry our cross if we want to follow him. You know, family, marriage is such a blessing. Joy, privilege, but also this cross. But we know that this cross leads us to salvation, to Jesus Christ. Today, Franca and, and Guy, they celebrate the silver jubilee of the wedding. So, I have an honor and privilege to invite them in front of Jesus' altar to renew their wedding vows. And Father Anthony is going to do it. Thank you so much. Dear Guy and Franca, on your wedding day, you stood before the church's minister and the community and your friends and solemnly vowed your love. Today, on your 25th anniversary of marriage, you stand before this, your community of faith, as a reminder of the great beauty of the sacrament of matrimony. You stand before your children, who reflect the life and love you have given to them through your marriage. You stand before us as witnesses to the married life which Christ abundantly blessed on your wedding day. I now invite you to join your hands together and renew the promises you made in mutual and lasting fidelity. I have taken you and take you again, Franca, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I, I love you, I will love you and honour you all the days of my life. I have taken you and take you again, Guy, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honour you all the days of my life. Franca and Guy, you have renewed your marriage vows before this community and the church. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your commitment and fill you with his blessings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You should kiss. Kiss your bride. <laughs> Congratulations. As disciple of Jesus, we rely on prayer to strengthen us. And so we pray now for ourselves, for one another, and for the whole world. For the courage as baptized Christians to follow where Jesus leads us. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For those willing to risk danger for others, for organ donors and first responders, missionaries and those in the military, law enforcement personnel and peaceful protesters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in danger without adequate help or support, for people in areas of war or political conflict, in prisons or refugee camps, in violent neighbourhoods or families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and guardians who make great sacrifices for their children, 
and for grandparents who have assumed at personal cost the care of their grandchildren. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children in our parish, that we may work together to ensure the happiness and confidence of every child and foster an environment of safety and protection where children flourish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, especially for Guy and Franca Bonserio, who are celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary, that all will continue to live their vocation of love as an example to their families and the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the neediest among us, for the sick and dying, and for those who have died, especially those mentioned in our parish bulletin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our helper, you uphold us in times of turmoil and danger. Like your people of old, we call upon your name and we ask for the courage to follow wherever Jesus leads us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. If a man wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. When the just cry out, the Lord hears and rescues them in all their distress. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Those whose spirit is crushed, he will say. If a man wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept this, your servant's offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal, having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle Saint Michael, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, as one God's family, united in Jesus Christ, in his love, Let's pray together as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our saints, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let's offer each other the sign of love, the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of Take away. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that, that you should, should enter my, my roof, but only say, say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. healed. And friends, now let's invite Jesus to come into our hearts in a spiritual way. My, My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that it affects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, dear friends, a uh, few days ago someone sent me an email regarding our messes. Father, thank you so much. I love your messes. There's only one thing. You talk too much after mess. Okay, point taken. So today, very sweet and short. But you know, you have a function, you can switch me off. But today, short. Um, first of all, congratulations 
to Franka and Guy on your anniversary. 25 years together, such a wonderful witness to Jesus Christ. And yes, you carry your cross of marriage, of family, as I said, sometimes sweet, and sometimes there are tears, but salvation comes through cross. Very, very well done. And remember, you carry it together with your kids, with your family. And secondly, uh, people say, you know, COVID-19 is dangerous, but Delta is vicious. And a friend of mine sent me an interesting photo with a sign taken in front of Methodist Church. And sign says, don't worry about the Delta. We have the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. Amen. Stay safe in Jesus Christ. You belong to Alpha and the Omega. Thanks so much for the Anthony. Thanks so much to our musicians, Nadia, Franca, and Guy, and our local Spielberg, Camilo. Thank you so much. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness, the wickedness and snares of, of the devil. devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Weird blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Too much talking. <laughs> <laughs>